guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review, this time for the game Monstrosity by Deepwater Games. It plays 3 to 8 players, takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 8 and up. The game is made by Eric Slauson, and there are a ton of recognized artists in this game as well, very popular ones from the board game community, and this game is basically about trying to discover anomalies. So anomalies exist in the world, and people will then witness said anomalies, and and then they'll try and explain these anomalies to the specific organization. The organization is going to do their best to figure out what type of anomaly it is. Is it dangerous or is it not dangerous? And then, of course, they're going to see what type it is in this, like, catalog. And uh, the person who explains it, if he does a good enough job, will score points. And the person who draws the closest formation of the anomaly will also score points. It's a party game that involves drawing and guessing and memory. And, of course, trying to recite what you hear in written form. The game plays in rounds, so every single player is going to be a witness, as well as going to be one of the people who uh, is going to be doing the drawing. And you're going to try and get the most points as as most points as, as possible. In, the, in a round, you can technically get one point at most, or zero at least. And whoever has the most points after going all the way around the table is the winner of the game. Comes with a lot of components, dry erase markers and cards from the different artists, from the different anomalies. I'll tell you down below what it looks like, how it plays. They'll come up, I'll discuss my review. And if you're interested, there'll be a link down below in the description. Welcome to the game Monstrosity and all that is included for the base game. You're going to be getting these dry erase boards, up to eight of them. You're going to be getting markers. You'll be getting a cases closed, which basically is going to allow you to score points for players as well as uh, name the agents for each of the rounds. There is a set of cards and all of these are going to have anomalies or monsters that you're going to be attempting to draw throughout the game. I don't want to give you too many of these monsters though because you need to try and keep them from memory or in this game, and I'll explain as we talk about playing it. Uh, there's also going to be a rule book. If you get the expansion for the game, it will come with an extra dry erase board and additional cards for further gameplay. To begin the game, it's rather simple. If you're playing a three-player game, one player will be the witness, the one who recognizes the anomaly, and the other two players will be artists. The witness will draw a card from the deck, and they will have 20 seconds to memorize it as best as possible to gather all the features in their mind. After that, the witness will then describe to the artists the creature in detail. The artist will have two minutes to draw on this specific dry erase marker that they have, and the witness is just going to try and describe it and they'll be like oh, okay that character looked like a uh, uh, plankton from spongebob and it had this like circular bean type of a body it had a mouth protruding out of it had some teeth that came out and uh, it also had a large eyeball just one that kind of protruded outside as well um, and then it had a long furry tail that has a little ball at the end of it and it had two stubby little feet and so on and so forth after those two minutes are up and everyone has drawn to the best of their based on what the witness described, then the artists are going to reveal their drawings. And when they reveal their drawings, the witness will decide, based on his or her memory, which one of the drawings is the closest to related to the anomaly that they saw. After that, the witness is going to mark down the number of the artists they think did the best job. Then, the witness is going to reveal their cards so everybody can see the card that they saw. And the artists are now going to be in the position of deciding for themselves which one of the drawings is the best and closest to that specific one. And in, in, in a normal game, basically you're going to never be able to choose your own. You have to choose somebody else's. Then you're going to tally up points. And the way points works is very simple. If the artists pick the same one that the witness did, the witness will score a point. And the one that the artists pick the most of, the majority of, they will score a point. After all is said and done, every single player is going to erase the anomalies from their boards, and they're going to then pass the witness to the next player. And the next player will simply draw one of the cards and start to memorize it with their 20 seconds, and then of course the game will rinse and repeat. And after a number of rounds, after everybody has gotten to be the witness, you will see whoever has the most points tallied on this wonderful little cases closed board. And that's how you play the game, Mon. Monstrosity. Let's come up and talk about it. Monstrosity is a party game that involves memory and artistic talent, as well as being able to uh, correctly draw 
to the best of your ability what is being described to you. Uh, of course, the difficulty comes in having the witness remember all the different details based on the anomalies that he or she did see, and that plays a huge role in what you're going to draw. If somebody says it's a bean shape, but they don't mention it's an upright bean, and they you obviously think of a bean maybe on its side, your monster is going to look significantly different to the monster that they saw. So hopefully your witness is able to memorize and then give out the best details possible for the anomaly that they saw. Artist's job is to try and draw the best picture you can, because I'm guessing creativity as well as artistic talent doesn't hurt in this game, but also, of course, the main thing is drawing the picture as close as you can to the actual uh, anomaly that you'll see. All of these monsters are very, very different. So this one here is a seahorse that is on land that happens to have a aquarium on its back for some reason. You've got this weird monstrous brain bug with hands coming out of its face. You've got this plant-like being that's basically got a bunch of flowers popping out of it and tentacles and so on and so forth. And so each of these monsters is going to be different. Now, another thing I mentioned in the rules is make sure that you don't look at the cards before playing the game uh, because this could skew the way it's supposed to be played. Leave these for later. In fact, there's even a card on the uh, seal wrapped uh, container saying, hey, don't look at this until the game begins because otherwise you're going to probably rem remember those monsters for next time. So you always want to play from the top all the way to the bottom and then once again, rinse and repeat. Thusly, your memory is going to uh, not be able to remember those monsters that were played maybe a year ago. Uh, this game can be played up to eight players of the base game and nine with the expansion. Uh, there's enough... Uh, markers and whatnot that everybody can use, as well as, of course, the R the witness who won't need to do that. Uh, as the witness, your objective is to try and not only relay the most detailed information possible, but also assume what everybody else is going to pick. If you think that the closest drawing is one, you want to make sure that they're also going to think that as well, and hopefully you did a good job of uh, describing it. Now, some players uh, may be way, way, way off, and you know that's not correct, and there might be one shining example, and that can happen and does happen in the game, but for the most part, most of everybody's drawings are pretty terrible, and they're all pretty uh, inaccurate, and so the inaccuracies will be based on what you think is the most important. Uh, missing a trunk or missing wings, which one is going to be more detrimental based on what the group's decision is going to be. And then, of course, as an artist, you want to focus on just being able to pick the best one that you think is mostly related, uh, just to be fair about it, specifically because you can't even choose your own anyway. Uh, I guess you could could be gamey in this situation, but I don't see why you wouldn't a party game like this one here. Uh, this game has high quality components. All the boards are nice and thick. The dry erase boards are a little hard to erase the drawings, and you kind of have to give it a good college go on it. Uh, maybe even use a little spittle or some, some spray water if you do have that. The markers are great. These are probably one of the best uh, markers I've seen for a game like this. Nice high quality. The cards are all different. All the monsters are unique, and they're fun to try and describe. They made it. So the artist made it so that these guys sound kind of out outlandish when you're explaining them and players are like wait what did you say i don't understand that uh and there's also a, a variant of the game as well where the uh, the witness cannot basically say what the monster is the artist will have to ask questions interrogating the witness and the witness can only describe what the artists are asking them to it's kind of like you're playing a sketch artist uh for a crime scene investigation and the witness is like trying to describe the perp perpetrator of the crime and you're like okay did he have black hair uh, did he have earrings tattoos and that's another way to play the game as well which works just great we played this on live stream and had a ton of fun with this game you don't necessarily need to be a great artist as long as you're able to correctly draw what is required and people don't mind picking yours, even if it looks kind of like a child's uh, attempt at drawing a stick figure, like my own artwork, uh, and that wasn't the, a problem for us. If you like a game that's quick and short, that feels like a party game, that involves drawing, that plays kind of like Pictionary, but utilizes memory, then Monstrosity is going to be the game for you. If you do not like drawing, if you do not like things that require memory, these are things that are going to be a problem in the game for the most part, something you'd probably want to stay away from from this game. And this is another one of those games where I think when you see the game, you hear about the game, and you see what is included, you're, you're going to either be, yes, this is a game I would pick up for me and my family and my friends, or no, this is not for me. The most sophisticated modern gamers playing Euros and whatnot are not, probably not going to be playing this game as much if those are what they're into. However, at party times, whenever you're sitting down with family, friends, around a table, this is going to be a perfect game to bring out. It's something grandma and grandpa can jump 
jump into as well as little kids. Very, very easy to understand. I was able to write all the rules down on this board here, which is why I showed you the back on the review. Uh, so I was able to just kind of look, look and see if I needed to, but I actually really didn't even need to because it was so straightforward and simple as to how it works and how the point scoring system works. And in reality, it doesn't really matter who wins this game. It's really about having fun and the experience of trying to explain the anomalies and then of course trying to draw them. If you're interested in taking a look at Monstrosity, take a look down below, link in the description where you can pick it up from Deep Water Games. An excellent little drawing game if you enjoy it. I, if you think you enjoy it, I would definitely suggest taking a look for yourself. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Monstrosity. If you're interested in the game, like I said before, down below, as well as of course, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button, as well as go ahead and take a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to check out my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's coming out March 2nd on Kickstarter. It will be a link in the description for you to take a look at it as well. If you play as a mermaid, gathering shells from the ocean, uh, bringing them onto the shore, and then pulling them onto your treasure chest to try and make combinations and of course complete open and secret objectives while utilizing your mermeeples uh, to do certain abilities and whatnot. There's a lot of different variation and extra stuff and content that you can take a look at if you would like. Like I said before, I'll provide a link there so you can check it out if it's something you'd like to pick up. You can also check out our uh, Discord and our Patreon. Thank you patrons. I appreciate everything you guys have done. Hopefully you've gotten some of your moonshell swag and participating in that contest for painting the miniatures. We're going to start getting that on a soon as I make sure everybody has the swag to do so. And that's pretty much all I got for you. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to remembering those anomalies with you next time.